Welcome back everyone to another University of Reddit Java for Beginners production. I am Damien, your host, and this is going to be lesson number two. We're going to be talking a little bit about style, a little bit about arithmetic, and a little bit more about what we covered in the first video. Um, the first video was unnecessarily vague, I think, but the absolute beginner side of Java is extremely difficult to figure out. Um, I'm just going to add in a couple of comments here so you guys can better understand what each of these things do. Um, okay, so in this case I wanted to talk a little bit more about style before I actually talk about anything else. And style is all about readability. Um, when you're a programmer and you're looking at someone else's code, if it's hard to read, it's just going to be a nightmare to look at. It's going to be a nightmare to try to figure out what's going on. Uh, it's going to be a real difficult time to, to figure out what the initial programmer was thinking. So that's why, you know, I can't, I didn't do this in the first video, but that's why as programmers we have certain ways of, of setting up programs. Now you'll notice that throughout this program everything is indented in a certain way, and it typically falls in a straight line. Uh, the exception is, in my case, I put opening brackets on the same line as the code that opens them. But you'll notice that the ending bracket, or in this case the bracket that closes main, is in a straight line directly below the leftmost point of main. And the one that closes the class is directly below class. So that kind of is how we want things. And then everything in main is indented, you know, one tab further than main. And as we get further into coding, you'll see us indenting things further and further and... Um, it's, it's just little things like that, and, you know, when we ask to, for someone to enter a number, you'll notice that we asked them to enter the number, then we made the variable that would hold the number, and then we actually took in the number, and then we put a blank line. And the reason why we did that is we just wanted to show that these three things are grouped together. So... As long as we know those three things are kind of working together, if we're a programmer, we can just look and see, you know, okay, hello world's kind of its own thing, blank line. These three things are, you know, another thing, blank line. And then the print, I suppose you could put that in the same category if you wanted to. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is variable naming. And this is a, a really big thing uh, in Java you'll notice that when you're reading somebody else's code the the variables are always done in a certain way uh, typically instead of having an int like a we're going to be using more descriptive names as we get further into our programming um, this might be something like uh, double bank interest and I just spelled that totally wrong so we have something like double bank interest, and you'll notice that I use some uh, a lowercase b in bank and an uppercase i in interest. That's actually called camelback notation. Um, just for the record, I don't think I've taught this yet, but double is another type of number uh, storage variable. Or number storage type, I'm sorry. Uh, Ints can only hold whole numbers, doubles can hold um, decimal numbers, but that's kind of getting off the point for the moment. Camelback notation just means first word has a lowercase letter, and all words after start with a capital letter. So if you have something with three words like double bank loan interest. It would look something like that. You'll also notice that basically every single line I'm doing ends in a semicolon. I'm just going to comment these out because we won't actually be using them. 
Uh, every line I'm generating ends in a semicolon, aside from things that end in open braces. Again, that's sort of a style thing. You can print out uh, printlins and actual print statements over multiple lines. I don't like to. It, it just it looks tacky to me. Um, just try to keep everything on one line. It's just infinitely easier to read. Aside from that, what I wanted to talk to you guys about are variable types. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about uh, arithmetic. So we'll start with variable types. I've already introduced double, um, but there's also another purpose for double. Um, I did mention that int had a certain amount of, of number that it could store, that there was a maximum amount of int. And if you exceeded that much, then you'll start to get really funny results. Despite me saying that I would go and look it up last video, I still haven't. Um, I apologize for that. But it's, if I recall, it's somewhere around 2 million. I think it's over in my game development uh, for Java book, but I can't find that right now. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's around 2 million, but as you get into other data types, you know, um, you can store numbers a lot larger than 2 million. Uh, I know that double can store a ridiculous amount of numbers. I think it can store up to around a trillion. Um, and the other upside to double is that double can store any number that is a decimal number. So this stores whole and decimal numbers. And you might be asking yourself, well, if double does all that, why don't we just use doubles instead of ints? The answer is it actually takes up a little bit more memory. And now, in a, a small program like this, you know, it's 30 lines, what does it matter? And the answer is it doesn't. But if you do pursue a career or even a hobby in programming, there might be a time when you make a program that's a couple thousand or maybe even 10,000 lines long. Um, Obviously, it won't all be in one window like this, but when you're dealing with that, you know, you're probably going to have hundreds, maybe thousands of variables. And so, you know, conserving little bits of memory here and there will add up. So use an int when you're going to have an int. If you're not sure, you can use a double. Um, aside from that, there are going to be other types of variables. You know, not everything in programming is numbers. So we also have uh, variables that hold different types of uh, words and letters. There's char, which is just going to hold a single letter. So in that case, uh, char is holding C. So if we do a system.out.println for C, it would simply output this uppercase C, and I'm just going to uh, comment out everything else. I know I could use a multi-line comment here, but I'm not. I really don't know why. So, okay, if I just run this program real quick, I think I ended up hiding my uh, thing. I don't know. There it is. You'll see that we now have C uh, as our output, which is what we wanted. Now there's another type called string, and we will get into a way that you can hold more than one character with C later. Um, when we are dealing with characters, we're using single quotation marks on either side of them, so you'll notice those right in there. Strings hold more than one uh, letter. Technically, when we did this system.out.println up here for hello world, that's actually considered a string, the hello world. So if we did string hello equals hello world, we can then do a system. Dot, sorry, system supposed to be capitalized. Dot out dot println. Hello. 
And so, in this case, we're just going to run this program, and now we should have C on one line and Hello World on another. So, these are just different types of uh, variables that we can use. There's going to be a lot more that I introduce throughout the course itself. Um, As I was saying, there's going to be a lot of stuff in the future that we cover. Um, a lot more variable types. We're going to be talking about uh, ints and longs and floats and doubles and strings and arrays and booleans and etc. But for right now, just kind of play around a little bit with ints, characters, strings, and uh, doubles. Um, I don't expect that you guys will be doing any homework, you know, based off of what we've done here, but the next lesson I go into, there will be homework. But I did promise you guys that I would talk a little bit about arithmetic, and I'm hoping that I have time for this. Um, I have about 200 seconds left, so I'm going to try to make it quick. Now, in normal arithmetic, there is PEMDAS. Uh, that's your order of operations. That has always been parentheses, exponents, uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Now, it's a little bit different with Java. Um, it's actually p dash md dash as because the way we handle exponents in Java actually involves parentheses. So you'll notice that I also grouped them because multiplication and division are actually handled on the same level of priority. Um, so, and then the same goes for addition and subtraction. So, if there's ever a case where you have multiplication and division, you know, next to each other, it always evaluates from left to right. So, an example of that might be something like this. You know, what What do you think this should be? Um, we're going to do a system.out.println and So this can be a couple of different things. This can be 2 plus 4, which is 6, times 8, which would be um, 48. Or it could be 4 times 8, which is 32, plus 2. So in this case, we're going to give it a run, and it comes out to 34, which means that, like I said, the multiplication division happened before the addition took place, despite it being further in the equation. Um, but it, say we did something like that. Now, what we can expect this to do, based on what I've written above, is multiply 8 times 4, which is 32, divide it by 2, which is 16, and then add 2, which is going to be 18. And there you have it. That's going to be simple arithmetic using Java. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this. I've commented everything out. If you want to play around with stuff that I've made, the source code is posted below. Um, if you have any questions at all about this, please ask, because this sort of stuff is going to be used everywhere into the future. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. We're going to be getting into some actual real programming next lesson. I'm anticipating putting it out tomorrow, which is the 3rd of July 2011.